So in exercise one, we are asked to try and find the rate of change of the Lagrangian. And for an extension, we were asked to find the Hamiltonian. Today, we're going to go over the solutions. So if you remember, the Lagrangian L is a function of position x, velocity x dot, which just means the rate of change of position. And if the Lagrangian has an explicit time dependence, it will have a component of time. So this x stands for position, x dot velocity, and t time. Now this is only for our Cartesian coordinates. We can make this more general for polar coordinates or Cartesian coordinates, or whatever coordinate system you can come up with. And for a generalised coordinate system, we label x with qi, x dot with q dot i, and t is just time. So we can think of this function here being qi, qi dot, and time. Where the i stands for the number of dimensions, you could have three dimensions or you could have two dimensions. So that's what the subscript i stands for. So the rate of change of the Lagrangian is given by dl by dt. And it's going to be the sum of all of the i's, in other words, all of the dimensions that you happen to have, of the partial of l with respect to position, qi, times the rate of change of position, which is velocity. So you can put q dot i. Then we add dl by d q dot i, which is the velocity, times the rate of change of velocity, which is acceleration. In other words, we could put qi double dot. Now, because the Lagrangian has an explicit time dependence, we need to add dl by dt. Remember, we need to consider each three components when we're making the rate of change of a function. OK, so let's examine the various terms in this equation. Using the Euler-Lagrange equations of motion, we can simplify dl by dqi and dl over dq dot i. So if you remember, the Euler-Lagrange equation goes like this. So I'll just separate that quickly. We have dl, or sorry, dl by dqi is equal to the rate of change of dl by dq dot i. Okay. So this dl by dq i, well that's just equal to the rate of change of dl by dq dot i. And we know that dl by dq dot i is momentum, and therefore d by dt of momentum is the rate of change of momentum. Therefore, this dl by dq dot i simply becomes the rate of change of momentum, or p dot. What about this term here, dl by dq dot i? Well, that's just going to equal momentum, yeah? So we can write this in another form, dl by dt is going to equal the sum of i of our momentum, or rate of change of momentum. We can put a subscript i there, and then q dot i plus pi times q dot dot i. And then we add our dl by dt. So now if we use the product rule for the derivatives, we can simplify this term. So we get the sum of i is, um, I can put rate of change here. You can put it on the outside or the inside, it doesn't really matter. And it's going to be the rate of change of pi times q dot i. Okay? And of course we can add our dl by dt. Because we can think of this as pi times q dot dot i plus p dot i times q dot i. And that's what we have here. 
So we can simplify it in this term. So that's what we have here, and it's the rate of change of the Lagrangian. Now, this is the important bit if you want to try and find the Hamiltonian. You can stop here, but there's more to do. Okay, now you can think about integrating the whole equation and rearranging it. So if you do that, we get, I'll just box that off, this is for the Hamiltonian now. So if we rearrange this equation and integrate it, we get the sum of i pi q dot i minus your Lagrangian, so you just bring it onto the other side, is equal to the integral of dl by dt. Now we're going to make that term equal to h, okay? Therefore, we can say that the rate of change of h is equal to d, uh, minus dl by dt. So, the rate of change of h is equal to minus dl by dt. And we find that h is actually the Hamiltonian. So the steps leading to this equation may seem a bit complicated, but the res result is very simple. The new quantity h varies with time only if the Lagrangian has an explicit time dependence. So we find the formula for the Hamiltonian, which is just a, basically the total energy, is equal to the sum of i, which is the number of dimensions, of pi times q dot i minus your Lagrangian. And if the Lagrangian has an explicit time dependence, dh by dt is equal to d minus dl by dt. And if the Lagrangian does not have an explicit time dependence, then we find that dh by dt is equal to zero. See you in the next exercise.